50 miles an hour is the claimed top speed of this electric bicycle. 44! And it runs on 60 volts with a 50 amp controller. But before we get on, I gotta show you guys something significant. This is not a 60 volt battery. 71.5 volts. So we are definitely running a little bit extra pep on this 60 volt battery. Go! <laughs> and looking at the price of this e-bike, this thing's probably gonna be putting some companies out of business. You can see the official price in the link below this video and any discount I can offer you down there. But do not buy the Motor Goat version three just yet. We gotta crack this thing open, test the top speed, test the acceleration, see if it can climb hills, see what the range of this e-bike is. I mean, I can pretty much tell you this thing's gonna be worth the money. But let's take this thing out for an official review and make darn sure it is. Let's try these out, oh my goodness. Motor goat, team pedals. So it'll look like a bicycle, right? And here's what it looks like after you crack the box open. Check this thing out in a minute. And it comes with this little briefcase thing. We'll take a look in here in a moment. And check this out too. But first, get this bike, get this thing out of the box. Take a look at this. Looks like it's got a little lip on the back here to keep you from flying off the back. And a little indication that the controller is gonna be down here. It's got a little pattern here on the top. Pretty good squish to it. And it's wide, which I love. When you're passing people at 40 miles an hour, people are gonna know you're on a goat bikes. And it's rolling on a fast ace monoshock, which we'll look at in a minute. And one of the main difference between this and the Billy Goat is not just the battery size, but the battery location. The battery mounts up here on the Motor Goat, which as you may have noticed by now, leaves a huge open area. Oh my god. <laughs> what? I think I'm a little bit too excited. <laughs> Somehow I just like flipped off my chair, bro. What, the, what can I say? This e-bike has me on the edge of my seat. Which as you may have noticed leaves this huge space down here. For what? A second battery kit available. Compared to the Billy Goat, basically this bike's little brother, there really is no place to mount a bigger battery on that bike. Story's a little bit different here, because when you have a massive hub motor that is rated for 60 volts and 2,000 watts continuous, we're gonna be able to draw some serious power from that 50 amp controller, and those numbers can definitely drain a battery pretty darn quickly. Which, speaking of battery, what are we working with here? Goat bikes. It is a 60 volt battery with a rated capacity of 25 amp hours. That's five amp hours more than the smaller brother, the Billy Goat, with a total energy capacity of 1,500 watt hours. Usually I weigh my batteries on this little scale. Uh, this thing easily maxes this one out. So let's get it on the big boy scale. 19.6 pounds for this battery. And speaking of big, this is not a small bike. It's got some weight to it. We'll put it on official scale here in a few. But first, let's look at the wheels. Looks like 17.4 pounds on the wheels. They are mag wheels instead of spoke wheels. Makes them a little bit more heavy, but you're never gonna have broken spokes. So they'll be relatively low maintenance. And just like the Billy Goat, we have some big thick tires. 20 inches tall by 4.5 inches wide. Almost approaching uh, motorcycle territory. And to stop all of the power and weight of this bike, we are rolling on 203 millimeter rotors. And of course we have a dual crown fork up front. Branded goat on the side. Compression adjustment on the right. Preload on the left. Goat bikes. The rear suspension is a fast ace monoshock. The compression adjustment is right here. And the rebound adjustment is on the rear. It is running a 550 pounds per inch spring. Pretty beefy spring. Motor goat branding. And check out this hole and that hole. I'll show you what this is for later. And we are running R4 hydraulic brakes. They are four piston hydraulic brakes. And the bars are... Equipped with some features that make it clearly a bicycle, such as a full twist throttle and ignition and a seven speed Shimano shifter. We'll fire that display up in a moment. Controls on the left, turn signals, high beam, low beam, horn, hazard lights. Should probably just put this on immediately before I even leave here. And a round rubber grip on the left. Hydraulic brake levers. You can adjust them right there. Time to get that wheel on, which means we need our tools. And while we're here, let's check out the charger. Big old beefy charger. What? 71.4? Hold on a second, bro. This is a 60 volt battery. I think I saw on the website it could charge a 71. I was like, what? Apparently this charger is capable of charging this battery to 71.4 volts at four amps. So a 25 amp hour battery divided by a four amp charge rate 
Alexa, what's 25 divided by four? I didn't do so well in school. So about 6.25 hours to charge from completely empty to completely full. And we're gonna have to measure the actual voltage of this thing uh, when it gets to max. Is that stressing this battery out too much? I, I don't know, I I'm not asking questions yet. I, I am asking questions, but I'm pretty freaking pumped to try this thing. And since we are team pedals, we get these. I probably wouldn't rely on this thing to keep your bike from getting snatched, but uh, this is a lock and I'll show you in a moment. Oh yeah, here's what we came here for. Tool. Oh yeah, we get uh, passenger pegs too, sweet man. Same as the Billy Goat. This one might actually have a little more room for passenger. Then of course our manuals. One more box to rip open here. Yeah, check the flags. We already know we're gonna win. So we do get some mirrors. Maybe I'll try them this time. I didn't put them on the Billy Goat. I already know everybody's gonna be behind me. Pop that headlight on and the axle for the front. Don't use that one. And then of course our turn signals for our bicycle. So for those of you who do order this bike, cause let's be honest, you are gonna buy this bike. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people are, I know. The big one goes on the right side, then this, then the washer, then that little one first here. Then pull out this thing between the brakes. Now with the axle on there. Oh my goodness. <sighs> you really need two people for this, man. Gosh darn it. I told you guys to do that the wrong way. So small one on the brake rotor side, then the big one on the other side. Drop that piece in, washer. Fender on, turn signal on. On, headlight on, and of course the most important part of this bicycle. Almost time to power this up, but first let's weigh it. Today my weight is, oh shoot, 203.2. And let's see if I can pick this bike up even. Oh my goodness. And step on the scale, here goes nothing. 294.6 we'll call it. That's about 92 and a half pounds without the battery. Which we already weighed in at what was the number? 16.6 pounds. 93 plus 16, so about 109 pounds on this big boy. Oh, I think it's about time to pop that battery on there. Big gas tank up here. Big, big uh, lithium tank. Gotta say, dude, that's looking pretty dope. Before we power it on, we'll look at this side. Derailleur guard installed. Looks like this thing, oh yeah, this got dropped. So it's always great when they install the derailleur guard in shipping in case it does get dropped on the side. I can see this one did. This little $1 piece here bent a little bit. We can bend it back, no problemo. The good news is it saved our Shimano derailleur, which will control our seven Shimano gears. Not a big deal to bend it back, just kind of get a, a wrench of some sort. That'll do it. Good as new. And in case you missed it in my Billy Goat review, this is a direct drive hub motor. Works a little bit different than a geared hub motor. These are known as speed motors. They're not quite as torquey as a geared hub motor, but they can take a lot more power. As you can see here, shows uh, 2,000 watts nominal on this. These are a little bit heavier. A lot of the weight of this bike is in the hub motor. This is a big hub motor. And real quick, I wanted to show you this is the lock. Uh, you can run it right on through there. Actually, I'll do it the other way. Right on through there and this side just locks right on here so this will at least you know prevent somebody from just kind of rolling off with your bike uh, you know I wouldn't really rely on that but better than nothing then it looks like when you're not using it you can just store it up here there's a little cutout hole on both sides then of course you have your passenger pegs which would go right in here not really intent on having a passenger but super cool to have the option well I think it's about time we power this thing up so we have the key on the right oh I wonder if I put my turn signals on the correct way looks like the left blinker is on. Oh, heck yeah, nice. So signals will work. Now with the key on, just press this power button. Go bikes. And it is a color display. Battery percentage is indicated up here in the top right, 95%. These numbers aren't really lined up. That's interesting. And we have, let's see what kind of modes we have here. So zero pedal assist, one, Two, so it changes to blue, and then three turns to red, and there's just three levels of pedal assist. Really all you need. And it looks like it has an average speed of 28 miles an hour so far. Trip is shown here, odometer. If we hold the plus and minus, you can get into advanced settings usually. Yeah, so check it out. Change your units if you want. Boost gear, what? I actually forget, what's the speed limit set to? 100. <laughs> Yeah, voltage level should be 60. Cruise, so it might have cruise control, Bluetooth, and factory reset. All the goodies, easy to operate. So with the headlights off, this is what it looks like. You get a daytime running light, and then you can put the switch to turn on your actual headlight. And of course you get your hazard lights, which we should probably just leave on right now. And your turn signals for each side. And what does the horn sound like? <laughs> And around back, you get a brake light. When you pull the brake lever, it lights up. If I flip on the light by holding the plus button, you get a light on the rear. Also, the brake light still illuminates it a little bit more. Then, of course, 
your hazard lights work back here, and then your turn signals, which when you have your turn signal on, it just illuminates the light and kind of holds it. It doesn't flash. And to give you an idea of the size of this e-bike, I am six foot five, my inseam is 34. Here's what I look like getting on the bike. A little bit of room there for the stand over height. Definitely a bigger bike. See? is comfy. I'm liking it. I'll have to play the suspension on the rear a little bit. Feels like I'm getting on a motorcycle, basically. Here's what my pedal stroke would look like if I were to actually pedal this bike. Probably won't be doing too much of that. Uh, mostly due to the size of this e-bike. I mean, it's just so heavy, but yeah. You, you, you could get a little bit of exercise in if you want. Oh, don't get it too sideways. It's got some weight to it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of resistance on that motor. And we got the back brake on the left, like a motorcycle. So I'm pretty freaking pumped to get this out for a ride. <laughs> uh, e bikes are getting out of control, bro. I mean, especially for the price, dude. Are you kidding? All right, let's fire this up. So on pedal assist one, give a little bit of goose. Pedal assist two, ready, go. Oh, yeah. And uh, pedal assist three, ready, go. <laughs> oh, holy crap, dude. You can feel the wind. All right, so check it out. Pedal assist three, top pedal assist, no load at all. Ready, go. <laughs> that said 62 for a moment. So theoretically, you could hit uh, 57, obviously. Not, not with a, a weight on the bike. So, I mean, your top speed on this thing is gonna be dependent on your weight, mostly your weight and wind direction. I weigh 200 pounds, let's get it out there. All right, dudes, we're about to take out the Motor Goat V3 for a ride. But before we get on, I gotta show you guys something significant. I was so confused yesterday when I saw it said 71.4 volts on the charger for max charge. A 60 volt system charge to max is 67.2 volts. A 60 volt battery has 16 4.2 volt batteries in series. This is not a 60 volt battery. This battery has 17 cells in series which technically would make this bike a 3.75 is the nominal voltage of each of these battery cells. 3.75 times 16 comes out to 60. So technically the nominal voltage of this battery is 3.75 times 17. So this is almost a 64 volt nominal voltage battery. So we should get a little bit more pep out of this thing. And just to verify that this is actually factual, we're gonna pop this battery off of here. There we go. Each cell inside of here charged to max is 4.2 volts. 4.2 times 17 should come out to whatever that number was on the charger. 71 something, let's try it out. 71.5 volts. So we are definitely running a little bit extra pep on this. 60 volt battery. And they do give us a set of mirrors to put on this bike. I'm not gonna put them on there. And also this uh, little container here, storage unit here. We go right up in there. Oh, you wanna go out for a ride on the goat? I would too, bro, not yet. He was just drinking goat milk. <laughs> drinking your goat milk? Bro, you made, you made a, a mess. Clean your mess. So of course you could run the dual battery on this thing. We'll see what kind of range we get out of this one according to my official Strava measurement. So let's flip this key on, fire this thing up, get out for a ride. And boy, am I pumped to try this thing out. And in case you missed my Billy Goat review, check out these little red lights it has down there on the bottom of us turns. You know, it's kind of cool. Flip on the light here in the tunnel. Oh yeah. Got a little bit of light. And we're gonna get into the settings here. Go on down to the start strength. So we're only on three right now. I'm just gonna put it on maximum start strength and boost gear. Oh, so you can choose how many gears you have on the bike. We'll change it to five. It'll just give you more variety. Zero start, of course, will be on. And that should do it for now. And of course, the very first test we're gonna do is take this thing running up the 20% grade on the maximum pedal assist, which I just changed to five. I weigh 200 pounds. We'll just kind of get on the throttle here, see what kind of torque it's working with. So it's pulling us right on up. Says we're going 11 miles an hour. We'll see if that speedometer's right. And before we get too crazy, we'll just start out this thing on pedal assist one. So you can put it on like a lower pedal assist and kind of just cruise at a slower pace here. Pedal assist one will take us up to about uh, six miles an hour or so. And we do have, you know, some pedals if you do want to actually pedal this thing or, you know, if your battery dies, you can get it home. Now this is a very heavy electric bicycle. Let's go ahead and try pedal assist two. Oh my goodness. All right, we got some get up and go already. And I am on gear number seven already, pedaling along here at, says I'm going 19. And we'll go ahead and throw on the polarized sunglasses. Can you see that display? Heck yeah, you can. So that's always a great sign. So from a stop here, let's just not use a throttle at all and do pedal assist three. The cadence sensor kicks in after about mm, half rotation or so. And uh, I'm really, I'm not even putting any power in. Oh my goodness, this thing's already hitting 30. Holy smokes, dude. 
Four on Fellas says three out of five. And real quick, we gotta stop over here and get a uh, phone mount. And while we're here, we've gotta get a closer look at the Billy Goat compared to the Motor Goat side by side. Well, in the space that I have here anyway. <laughs> yeah, I've gotta say, uh, the. The motor goat is more comfortable kind of hopping on back and forth between these two bikes the seat on the motor goat is oh yeah seat on the motor goat is way more squishy and more comfortable the billy goat that's not bad it makes like a little noise on that seat on the billy goat yeah dude the motor goat is worse that for sure heck yeah but we got things to do so we'll put that thing back and now with the speedometer up running let's just get on out here on the big road so it looks like the speedometer is accurate pedal assist three will take us up to 27 27 and going 27 28 ah uh, yeah you, you just can't keep up with the pedaling anymore or i can't anyway and boy you can really feel the weight of this bike going into turns man the battery is mounted a little bit higher on this one so yeah go, going into turns man you can you can just feel the weight a little bit not that it's a bad thing but you know just probably not quite as nimble feeling as the billy goat since that battery is mounted higher and is larger let's try pedals this four. Oh yeah dude <laughs> man dude these high power bikes they just put such a smile on your face so i have the suspension relatively soft you're probably not gonna be off-roading this bike a lot but you know you can definitely do it the seat i noticed is uh definitely more plush feeling on this compared to the billy go this is a very nice feeling comfortable bike to be on even at my size as long as i'm not pedaling it post this four rolling on the throttle here let's get out here in traffic and uh we're gonna crank this thing up to pedal assist five in just a moment let's see what i can do on just pedal assist four i had to light off there for a second so we don't rerun the tacoma pedal assist four is showing 35 35 on board, 38 on there into a very strong headwind. And we'll flip a turn signal on here. Check our blind spot for this mirror. I should have put my mirrors on and do a little bit of lane splitty split. We'll test the acceleration and top speed on Palace's Five in just a moment. So this is a gearless hub motor, not necessarily known for their acceleration, rather their top speed, but we'll go ahead and try a zero to 20 acceleration on this. Here's the GPS. Have it on pedal assist five. Ready, go. So definitely launches pretty quickly uh 15 20. so yeah so those numbers come up quick on there i'd say you know in terms of acceleration a geared hub motor still feels like it kicks harder accelerates harder but the, you know this is a very fast bike well, let's go try the top speed all right dude it's time for a top speed run we're gonna whip this thing around full throttle and see what we can hit i weigh 200 pounds so your top speed is going to significantly depend on how much you weigh we're at 32 33 35, 38, 41 according to the onboard, 38 according to GPS, 39, GP, 40 GPS. And we're tapering off a little bit on the speed show and 44 on board and 43 on the GPS now. Come on, give me 44. similar to the billy goat but man 44 is whipping dude and we're we're just holding 44 no problem man game 45 40 44 holy crap so this is the benefit of a speed motor right here man this thing can just keep cooking and cooking and cooking oh, <laughs> oh my goodness Woo. <laughs> if you're looking for a fast e-bike that can cruise fast for a long time this has got to be one of the top options on the market especially for the price man oh look at a ferrari so you know when i was looking at the motor goat online that seat on their picture it looks like it's all like it looks like it's all like spiky and stuff and i thought it might be weird or feel weird uh the seat that came on mine is not like that at all this seat is great man it's comfy so we'll get on out here for a little bit of a beach cruise see how this thing feels on the sand really where this thing's gonna feel at home is just cruising at high speeds not like high torque application situations like riding in the sand but we're gonna give it a try i'll run it up this uh hill here first so we do have the 4.5 inch wide tires uh you know they're street tires definitely not meant for riding in the sand the suspension on this bike though man i, I like it dude it's got the the coil mono shock there is no linkage back there but you know it's it's pretty decent especially for street riding so not the number one off-road option but we'll try it out here on the boardwalk in the sand see how it does i actually don't remember how the billy goat did out here we got a little bit of wind today this thing's just going right over all the bumps uh get out here in the sand so we are on street tires 4.5 inches wide so we should just glide right on over the top of most of this sand oh yeah dude this thing 
it's got all the power. Mostly we're just gonna be kind of putting the, the test, putting the battery to the test. Oh man, I ran over that stick. And uh, see how this battery and controller hold up to the heat and really pushing this thing kind of, you know, this is basically like the equivalent power output of running 44, 45 miles an hour on the street, putting down this much, oh my goodness, almost lost my balance there. There's like so many sticking in the back over here. Uh, this motor is quiet though. We got the hub drive motor cruising along just fine here. Uh, holding 15 miles an hour, so not ideal, but uh, not ideal bike for doing this sort of riding. You ideally, you know, want a gear hub motor probably with dual motors and also probably um, all wheel drive would be better. And the beauty of it is it looks uh, legal. That was the police I just passing by there. Because it has pedals, you know, it just kind of looks, you know, like a typical electric bicycle, a typical moped style electric bicycle. So, I mean, I know a lot of places are starting to crack down on the places, you know, like the Sarans, the electric dirt bike style e-bikes. This thing, uh, you know, is still flying under the radar in my opinion. So we'll continue on, run this through the uh, tail happy circuit, see what kind of range we end up with. Man, this thing just loves to cruise at high speed effortlessly. So of course the next stop on this ride is the California incline. It is that 85 foot tall cliff. No doubt we can make it up there. No, we're not gonna run it straight up to the top of that cliff. We're gonna take the 12% grade. And right now it is showing 98% on the battery. I know it's not that charged. We'll roll up this loopy loop section here. Throttle only, see how this thing handles, how much speed we can maintain. Full throttle. So it can climb hills, no problem whatsoever. I can definitely feel the weight. Uh, you know, it's not a light electric bicycle. And back brake is on the left of this one which is motorcycle setup. We'll give these brakes a test at the bottom of the California incline. Let's do full throttle, heading on up here. Full throttle, let off, full throttle. 11 miles an hour, 12, 15, 20. Oh, another Ferrari. Wait, was that the same one we saw earlier? 25, showing 29 on board, 28. And there's somebody in the bike lane, I'm gonna let off. Probably would've hit about 30, I'd say. So let's go test out the hydraulic brakes on this thing. 200 and, I forget what they are. 203 millimeter rotors coming in super hot here. I'm gonna let off the throttle. So back brake is on the left on this bike. You're definitely gonna wanna know that heavy bike. Let's try these out, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so back brake was locking up front brake uh brakes are good let's just leave it at that i kind of i was freaking out there for a second let's try that again so front brake is on the right oh my goodness dude that is a lot of stopping power so there's actually a ton of stopping power on these uh brakes like the back one just locked up so easily and the front one oh yeah i was just grabbing the back one way too hard the front one not hard enough let's test our nimbleness here go to the right uh, and you're right. I guess that would have been a great time to honk the horn because this is like a pretty pedestrian friendly horn. So say you're cruising fast and your squirrel runs out in front of you, you need to slam on your brakes for my Tony. Oh yeah. Man, those front tires grip up good, dude. I mean, they are 4.5 inch wide tires and uh, these two piston hydraulic disc brakes, 203 millimeter rotors. Uh, they really have some pretty darn good stopping power. Gotta be careful not to pull that uh, right lever too hard because it will lock up. You can do some endos on this thing. <laughs> so we're gonna head on home, check the final range, but first let me share my final thoughts on this e-bike. One thing I forgot to mention, I do like that I can kind of grab this uh, tank here with my knees. In general, this is like a little bit more comfortable bike compared to the Billy Goat, the smaller brother of this bike. Everything's just a little bit bigger on this one. Bigger battery mounted up a little bit higher, bigger voltage by a little bit. You can tell a little bit on the top end. Now this one will hold that higher speed for longer, easier. Really not like a huge difference, but there is a difference. MSRP on this one is $2,750. It is on sale right now for a significant amount lower than that. And I also have a discount link below this video if you want to help support my reviews here on Talby TV. I'd greatly appreciate your support. All you gotta do is click on that link, use my discount code, it would help support the channel. Uh, but in general, dude, for the price, I mean, a 60 volt, 60 volt plus electric bike for this price point dude this thing is absolutely bad to the bone dude uh, there's really just not many other e-bikes out there offering this much performance at this price point so i mean if you're looking for a high speed electric bike at a relatively 
bargain price if you can say bargain for just over two grand uh, this the motor goat v3 is an absolute killer deal in my opinion are there faster e-bikes out there absolutely do they cost more absolutely do they look legal they usually sure don't and with the crackdowns happening you know on like surround and stuff i think you know maybe more legal looking stuff might become more popular in the future oh, there's a uh, People looking up in the sky. It ain't something. Range right now is showing 88%. Uh, that can't be right. We'll get out the voltage meter uh, when we get home. I mean, it is a big battery, but this thing has big power. So, I mean, you're gonna, if you use the power, you're gonna burn through this battery pretty quickly, probably. Um, I'm gonna stop my rambling. If you're in the market for a moped style e-bike, I absolutely do not think you can go wrong for this one. Just click the link below the video, buy it and have yourself an excellent spring, summer, fall. You're gonna love this thing. LAPD police bikes are out today. Wait, those aren't bikes, those are quads. So we're gonna gun it all the way home, see what that does to the battery. So everybody knows speed kills range, but well, we're gonna see what this thing's made of. Watch out, bro, bicycle coming through. We're staying on the bike lane. Woo! <laughs> Woo, still home 38. Little wing splitty, splitty, splitty. <laughs> injured on a bike <laughs> is that a sign from the universe to me flip on the blinker here get on over a couple lanes yeah buddy dang dude i got home so fast well let's go ahead and pull up our metrics here just made it back home uh showing 20.5 miles hour and 33 minutes ride time average speed 13 miles an hour that thing's all electric and looking at the battery, it is showing 69% remaining. Uh, we'll get out the voltage meter and see what the voltage says. Although this is a not a 60 volt battery. This is like, what, so what did I say? 63 volt battery, 64 volt battery. It's all around, man. The Billy Goat V3 is a bad to the bone electric bicycle. If you're looking for your moped style e-bike, man, really don't think you go wrong with this one, especially if you use my discount link down below the video and get a little special price on it. Also help support my reviews here at Tailhead PTV. And I'd greatly appreciate your support. Showing 67%. We're gonna pop this off, see what that voltage comes out to. What is their idea of 67%? So voltage is 60.8. So I don't have a chart for this exactly, but I would put that at uh, probably a little bit um, under 50% remaining. So if you want huge range, you want to add a little bit of weight to it, go for it, add yourself a second battery on there. Uh, just keep in mind, you know, if you add that second battery, it's going to add substantial weight. So pros and cons, up to you, bro. Get this bike.